Wait, wait, wait. Hello, everybody. This is probably the last broadcast, um, audio and video broadcast just for today. Or for the time being, um, I'm going to have to really focus heavily on other needs that has to be taken care of. You know, it actually got me inspired. Actually, ironically, it was 10 years ago. I used to watch so much videos on Tom Lincoln, and he's a white guy. And I never know this dude was very deep about women, how really American women can really mistreat men, or materialistic vain, have very shallow disrespectful. I even know that that comes from, like, literally, I was kind of baffled. And this is intriguing to the red pill uh, era, which is still kind of going on. This is at the time, this is back in, wow, 2009. That's how I actually heard about him. Uh, actually, uh, I was looking up on videos. How I found about Tom Lincoln's was about looking up on feminist videos and stuff. Because at the time that I was doing the research um, for a recording song, I was looking up on women's rights or so. I heard feminist growing up or so. It was all the woman power, woman rights and stuff like that. And let me clarify something. This ain't attack on any woman rights groups or men white groups. Uh, right groups, anything. But just in case a feminist are foaming at the mouth, you ain't gotta worry. Just black men attacking you by all means to the white and black or whatever feminists feel a certain way about a man. So, this being said, um, Tom Lincoln's. I found about actually, he's pretty popular that he was only one of the first actual guys I look up on. When he was um, discussing against feminism and so like how women got so many rights, even more than men, to get opportunities or so, and this is a white dude putting game for other men. Actually, intrigued me as a black man to be inspired. Said, "Oh, I see how he was saying how American women used the system and leverage against a man. They have used, say, for instance, alimony, the lawyer's favor." The courts and the lawyers favor women over any any man, and that intrigues me. Then I look further deeper. So uh, I don't know how I found out about uh, Happier Broad. I was actually kind of intrigued, but this is actually blow my mind about just ten years ago, and that would be uh, West the Wood. How we how I found out about who? I guess I could be wrong. I forgot to be truthful. Somehow I actually came to the channel about that too. Like American one, I guess, because Tom Lincoln was making mention about how American women don't really respect men unless they have to be multi millionaires, wealthy, and established or so. And here comes the Asian dude. I said, huh, I, I know he's a very intelligent dude. And um, we had, this is YouTube at the time, way before the weird chain, you had like inboxes and private chats, like chat groups or so. We actually have real true interaction with people, so and we um we chatted privately because I actually said something about his videos so said to a man that you ain't got to be treated this way by American women. There's other women around the world that actually respect, value, appreciate men. And that actually kinda of treat me because also I was hearing so deep about Tom Lincoln's how the uh, red pill movement, the Mattel movement this was at the time I was very heavily into the red pill. I'm still kind of red pill, but also to some degree, I no longer associate myself with my child. That's been years ago. But it actually got me woken up that men are going their own way, basically, at a time that we shouldn't have to put up with their negative gender dynamics between man and woman. And I was hearing this for a moment, then we definitely get into the happier broad segment. And that intrigues me. So, you know, I used to think as a black man, I think it was cool to be, you know, disrespected, like to be disrespected by a fellow woman. I won't say anything bad or particular or anything, these women. But you know where I'm coming from, um, black men. You know where I'm coming from. Because nowadays you say anything, even in a so called debris or just a, a disagreeable way with these women, they will down to call you a misogynist or anything. Which is not, um, yeah, basically thing was normalized to be disrespected, put down, and mislabeled because you don't act or look like a particular stereotype. And it kind of was getting on me with, um, Tom Lincoln's about this. Like, huh. 
And let's be realistic, I'm not insulting the man's look. I'm not sure he do radio broadcast or anything. Man, I respect to Mr. Tom Lincoln, by the way. I just want to thank you for waking, waking my eyes on this, like for waking man. And I don't really do how feminist is also uh, part of the gender, to segregate the genders or so, to make the genders despise one another. And that's the reason why I also want to speak about this video too, or slash audio broadcast, that, um, Feminist has really no place in this day and age. Let's just be realistic. Like, before we had feminists, men we were actually happy. And the reason I'm kind of knows that too, because I, I look at my family books, mainly on my dad's side, and this is, they came up, I guess, soon as the feminist movement came about. So there was still healthy gender dynamics between men and women. And that's something that kind of intrigues me. Um, Man, and women were actually more happier back then, you know? And growing up where I come from, from the 80s and 90s, uh, make a long, painful story short, it was basically hearing the Ricky Lake show, Oprah, and so forth. Let's just be clear. Openly degrade um, men of color, you know? Anyways, I want to go also, the reason I got into also happier, bro, I was kind of realizing also grew up around foreigners myself and different cultures. It's quite interesting. We never, I never know. I was looking at this website. It got me reading Press and Treat. We saw just women, so opportunities, uh, education, a better way of life, being around better quality amount of people. You know, America is based upon segregation and discrimination, ignorance among each other and America must be a first world standard about that and you know I'm not talking about a woman and anything that's just petty and not worthwhile talking about I'm not focused on my, my time on women I'm focused on education for example we don't want to go abroad too well I also believe in international business I also love different cultures and languages I am just now figuring out the hard way about learning languages is well, business you know I'm I mean, also technology, so I had to learn the importance of Spanish and different language. I, I didn't have that opportunity. Cause let's be realistic, American education is garbage. And some people might be saying, why do you sound so negative against your own country as you're supposed to be American? So um, I just want to keep that brief, too, but mainly as a person of color, let's be realistic. I was heavily discriminated, still heavily discriminated, discriminated on jobs and just the viewpoint of men, especially, I hate to say it's even worse with men of color. We had the worst kind of images and stereotypes. None of the men, that's what also got me interested in these gentlemen here. That, that at the time, I was still kind of riding high off the interracial movement to dating outside my race till I realized there's much more besides just dating outside of race or anything. There's different multitudes and avenues that you ain't got to be mistreated, you know what I'm saying? They still believe in family and was an Easter part of family. They still believe in traditionalism with family. That family comes first, and I noticed that, that it treats me about how I look at Eastern culture as it impressed me too. Um, relationships and family still kind of matter, you know? Here in America, let's just be realistic. There's not a uh, bunch of broken families and divorce. And actually intrigued me about divorce. It's something I actually did a research upon well independently just for my own independent research. I was looking on news articles and I remember just back in two thousand four two thousand four or five, I remember I don't know how my dad had bought me Eddie Murphy uh Raw. Oh boy, <laughs> my dad should never bought me that but I was actually intrigued. Uh Eddie Murphy brought I guess uh, I'm African chick from Africa. It was a skit or so. And you guys can look at it. It was saying how that she actually was probably. She knew food. I forgot. <laughs> Fufu, yeah, Fufu. And so as soon as you get her to America to get her brainwashed, get her from Monkey Witch, suddenly she started to act and talk like an American and want half of his money. And I was like, oh, sh I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> 
And I didn't know anything about American, Americanization, Westernization, the time I really realized any foreigners added to them. Especially got a lot of foreigners where I'm at too. I was quite nervous and as soon as they get off here, they start at really arrogant and rude. And I was kind of nervous, like, why is that, why is they like that? And it was me when I was, like, back to when I was 14, like, that's why I was known as this news article, I was looking at the, at the marriage and divorce rate, and actually intriguing to this day, that it was more people, literally, in this article, it was like, two-page article, it was like, mostly people with divorce. And it was only like a very little section of people who literally getting married at 14 years old. I f did not know Eddie Murphy was telling the truth. And this was recorded back in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? So that's like well, nearly four, like 30 some years ago. It will be going on 40 pretty soon. Eddie Murphy Raw, man. You got you got, you got to look that up, man. Um, I probably right now pissed off some feminists and women of color. Women raised groups or something. I don't care. I just want to say, definitely shout out to Tom Lincoln and Winston Moore about this. That she got me thinking. They got me thinking for like over 10 years. I was saying about this to brothers and so, well, because I'm a black man, let's be real. Uh, we being just in the media as savages and predators and creeps and so. And I want to address something about the predator thing. I actually got called predator twice, or actually creep in a predator twice in my life. I was actually assaulted. The first one, was a chick, I didn't even know that she came to me on Facebook or so. And I won't say names, of no association with my cousin. So, so I didn't even know who she really was. You know, we talked on the phone here and there. And we were pretty cool with it. You know, for the last couple of years to last year, and somehow that she suddenly started calling me a stalker and a predator. And I was kind of like tripping out. Like, what do you mean? Like, what's wrong? Like, Cause I ain't talked to her for such a long time because she always told me she was busy going to see her dad or so. But I was just, I won't put the description of woman people. You already know where I'm coming from, black man. But, um, yeah, all around me, she had a father or so that's in, um, in the south somewhere. And I was kind of like, I want to get this out the way. I was falsely keep being looked as a predator, which is coming from, I was going to say the description, but I can't say fully. I don't want to be attacking anything, but ain't nothing negative or anything. I was called Predator and a creed that she had in her, I heard my mother say that she has no people that know about me that was crazy following me. I was just kind of like scared, like, hold on, you say you, you follow me, but you had the nerve to call me a Predator and a creep. Saying so that you know people that put tabs on me. I said, like, oh crap. Then ever since that, I lost. All contact with her from last year. I lost no, I had no respect for that bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad that I had to look her in such a degrading light. I won't come on negative. Um, the second time was just recently. Uh, if you guys pay attention to that, whatever bro, uh, she actually had inboxed me and I, when I made a video of True Force Loneliness. I guess somehow that I did contact. I said, okay, can I see a picture of you? Cause I don't know who you are. You know what I'm saying? She was told me that she was some middle-aged white lady. So I said, you know, I had a nurse say, I ain't trying to hook up with y'all. I didn't even ask you for a relationship. I asked, who the hell are you? And suddenly, uh, she came to my page again saying that uh, I was being a creep to her and anything, and called me a predator. Oh, I went off on this white chick. You know, so I, that I did open the admit. I went off on this white chick, called out her name in that one video a few days ago. And one of you guys said, Kareem, that's not cool. You're coming off her like this. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the description of black men look viewing that negative. Like, sorry, I have my window open. There's a lot of noise on me. I'm looking in a bad area. Just kind of tell Um, Yeah, so black men already have bad imagery and bad stereotypes. I, I already said it so many times, but I keep it brief here. How black men are very viewed in the media. It's awful, you know? And not only be chastised by racists and stuff. I did say this on Facebook. I say here, we chastised by racists, feminists, um, psychology, the media. Even, I won't say they in this particular light. I know the woman will backlash against me. You know, woman of color, basically. Can I just say that? 
Um, oh, and that's the reason I'm being treated also foreign lady because, well, I love different culture. I also know it's hard. I was kind of like skeptical. This is also on Facebook too, so I didn't really let them go through. Sorry, that couldn't be help. Yeah, uh, the reason got me interested into red pill. I mean, I was as deal with heavily to red pill. Really, just realized that yeah, I was open. I was I was a simp back then, and I was like slowly in woke. And how the way I got into red pill was I I came from a. My bad, I'm just gonna go through again. Sorry, y'all. I grew up in a very old, traditional, mixed up kind of environment. Oh, once again, hurry up. Yeah. I'm waiting. I got that from Sonic the Hedgehog, Jaleel White, Steve Urkel. I don't want to close this window. Hold on, man. Be right back. Alright, then. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back once again. I apologize. I have to let the window open because it's getting quite stuffy. Um, the reason I got into red pill um, material because I meant coming up, I was, um, Blinded simp. I had at the time was not aware that at the time growing up I was um, raised by my great parents. May they rest in peace. But they came from a very traditional family the, at a time, and I realized they did not put me on a lot of game as far as dating, what to look for, what not to look for, and I had dated kind of young. I dated ten years old, so of course. I have no reason why I had to date. I just dated. And make a long story short, my first girlfriend is a person of color, but I won't put them in a negative light, but I'm going to say this, that I was disrespected, cheated, taken for granted, spat on, slapped. But uh, I will put others in great detail later. I think you already heard that from the last previous video of uh, interracial dating. So I won't put that here. Basically, I did not enjoy that. And after that, I went to, and it also kind of correlates to interracial dating story that I share with you guys. So I'll share here. I met a white chick, Lauren, that actually treated me pretty good. And at the time, I thought it was cool to be disrespected. So I guess it was psychological abuse. And, and I was shocked my world as a young teenager, you know. Because I had dated this person of color since I was 10 to 14. So she was literally my only girlfriend. And I, I did not, um, I did not handle it that well until it took like, what was it, two seven years later. In 2006, I said, I would never know I was treated that good. Wow. But <laughs> that's another time for another day. But back to the red pill. I realized that I meant to myself, I was a borderline simp in the vagina. To, uh, did not know was, um, to let women walk over you. And it is quite baffling. At the time, have I told myself, I would tell myself to stand up for yourself, stop being a simp and a wimp, you know. But, I mean, I was a quiet child. I did not like drama. I didn't like, like any kind of violence or anything. But despite I had, I was not aware of the signs. Because nobody didn't taught me signs. What to look out for. And things I learned from life itself. And that, life is a bitch. That's all I can say about that. But back to the, uh, what got me heavy in the red pill was saying, you know, when I was listening to Tom Lincoln saying, you got to show some respect for yourself, man. Don't let anybody talk to you like that. You know, let these women degrade you. And I said, damn, that's kind of strong coming from a white dude. I mean, he let me really 
Uh, I guess to you guys, he's he not a very attractive dude, but he's a very popular dude. Very popular in the YouTube days back 10 years ago. And I was kind of noticing, like, wow, this white dude's kind of bold speaking on his own woman like that. I guess he had, like, a, I forgot, like, a white woman on the show or something or saying. I forgot what it was, but I was quite intrigued by the radio talks at the time. Like, a white guy could speak like this? I was floored. Like, literally, as a black man, I was literally was floored. Like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, damn. I did not know because I guess I was coming up, you know, like, white man, white woman, anybody else besides, let's be real, black man, black woman. Seemed like they had some mutual respect for each other. No, this white dude was going in for a white dude. I said, oh, shit. And I'm not being racist. I mean, he was literally going in on his own kind of woman. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> And these women were mad, you know what I'm saying? That's why I had the idea. That's why I got into somehow feminism for him. I said, oh. Then you look at the, today's feminism. It's not but pure man hatred. Like, purely don't respect men, don't value men, don't show any form of love for men besides don't use men for ATM or so. I said, this. I was kind of like shocked to hear similar words like that from a white guy's mind to respect. And also, I want to speak about the upcoming topic, too. Add this to um, on the video. I'm a little tired. Um, I got a lot of things I got to do, too. So, be my last video to do anything on debates. And it's actually, actually, ironically, he did, did some mention something about don't, uh, don't they seem mothers. And that's coming from a white guy. Tom Lincoln's a pretty dope dude, deep dude. And I was also wa watching this for multiple years. Uh, off and on hearing white guys literally on YouTube that actually got me inspired but don't date single mother. I said, wow, these white guys going in. And I'm like, yeah, we don't date no single mothers. I don't take no leftovers. No! I don't hear these white dudes going on saying lectures. I find it funny. This here is a little bit double standard. And I said this while I was making the video <laughs> and got inspired by it. I said, I think it would just be a I didn't think it was gonna be big, cause um, I was looking at the comments. Like, you don't really see a lot of women lashing or back lashing. I was like, All right, I ain't not see not one white woman or feminist or woman of color attack these particular guys or anything. And these white guys, there's no disrespect. Um, then when I made it, cause I was actually to see another black, oh, it's one of the black guy, he made this like back in 2016. That actually got me inspired, and I saw right in the comments he was literally was attacked by well, black women, feminists, all kinds of women. Then it starting to happen to me like was a few years ago. I actually had at a time I was um had my name plastered in a negative light by feminists or so at the time I forgot the lay um was painting me as a, um, as a misogynist. I was kind of laughing, what the hell is a misogynist? What the hell is a misogynist? Until one of you guys had pointed out to me a misogynist is a woman hater. I said, oh shit, I don't hate no woman. But later in the comment section, this what broke me as a black man. I said, I've never seen such, part of my terminology, such um, colorful and hateful words from anyone. I was like shocked to say that. Let me clarify before feminists attack me again. You know what I'm saying? Um, white and black and actually, ironically, was a Latina woman. Really got offended. I uh, said, so "Do you hate women? Are you gay? Or you need to come out the closet." Look, wait, what the hell? I'm gay. I was noticing. I was one of you guys also mentioned this up <laughs> for that topic. Um, wow, it's actually kind of baffling. That these white guys that you mentioned them, they single mothers, they don't even get attacked for it. Not no white, black, any feminists coming their way. But when a black man done it, now it's starting to become very popular because he was one of the, oh, I forgot what was one of the guys he made. He was one of the first black guys. No, one of the guys actually got inspired me too as a black person uh, was, uh, are black men selfish to date single mothers? And that's what got inspired another guy fall right after that. These two dudes were heavily attacked. Like, literally. I said, oh, shit. Like, these, these bros getting attacked. 
So I was trying to inspire by multiple dudes, uh, multiple dudes of different races of men that actually say that. And it puzzled me. They said, why is these white guys saying, don't they see the mothers? You know what I'm saying? You f no disrespect to any white guys that made a video or anything. I thought it was, to be true for the black men, I thought it was self-hating. So they do they hate their own women? So I really look, analyze that these uh, white women, sad to say, are not what they're innocent and all that claim to be. I say, oh, shit. I, that's what I got inspired to uh, don't date single mother videos. And I've never been that disrespected in my life um, since that video. Kind of till this day, I still get kind of off and on hate comments. Literally come from women and feminists and vaginas and simps. I mean, uh, when I made a post, there was some comparison of some old, or was it young and old, I think George Steiny or something, it was an old white feminist or something, some black woman, I don't know who she is. I find it funny, uh, literally on that Facebook post, I remember sharing before Facebook took it down, I have nearly like thousand um, likes or so, I was getting attacked, slammed, no disrespect, I was literally getting attacked by my own kind of woman. And white women too, and feminists and some groups. I say, Jesus Christ, like why is the black men getting attacked for it? When white guys can do that, they don't get attacked. When a black man does it, he get attacked by everybody. And I was kind of baffled that I was hearing brothers coming in defending me. I said, thanks. And now you see the white guys and other guys say, I mean, you ain't got to take shit for no bitch. I'm like, oh shit. These are white dudes saying that. I said, oh shit. Despite one of the guys did point out to me, you ain't bashing these women like the other guys. I said, I have to be kind of careful. I mean, I was being neutral on the situation by sharing that story I don't date single mothers. And wow. So I did date actually these white guys on YouTube, the Red Pill and the Ironic Metal community, um, for welcoming my eyes up to. Um, American woman dating and politics and stuff. That was pretty fun though. Sorry for the very long video. I never did this kind of video in a long time. It was actually one of the first videos actually went to half an hour. It was talking about feminism, Red Pill, Mattel, um, Happy Bro, and so forth. And I was kind of shocked too. I'm going to end this video on a positive note. When I was talking to these four ladies, also through parts of social media and also for years on social media besides uh, on like YouTube at the time with Twitter and Instagram. I was kinda of shocked how these women Pardon me once again. I was quite baffled and shocked how these women could literally show number respect for a dude, which I never even fathomed that like um Honestly, a lot of them are, some of them might be green card holders and scammers and stuff. I ain't naive, but I was quite pleasant to have a conversation with them. So just ask them real questions. Like I always test them before we even get serious. So what's your thoughts on men of color? What's your thoughts on black males? What's your thoughts, you know, just social media and so forth? Or what, tell them their cultures and stuff like that. Be quite compelling. Some they told me straight up they didn't like black dudes or anything, but I don't hold it against. I actually was curious as to, and they gave me description of why they, they don't feel a certain way. I said thank you for being honest, and I was kind of shocked how straight about four um the foreign ladies are. I said wow, I was actually kind of surprised how honest they were, you know. And also I was intrigued also by the cultures, many different cultures. Um, so I'm a little dry right now. And I just want to say, take the time out to say thank you so much for listening to this video. How I got woke to the red pill, man. It's hard to swallow. The truth is hard to swallow, but once it goes down, it enters your system. So I want, well, every man and woman, that was a way of a man hating feminist or so, by all means, men and women need taking red pills, you know. And. I do have to clarify something. I want you feminists to know, don't attack me again. You know what I'm saying? Please don't attack me. You know, I'm just a man. You know, learn how to appreciate. Don't let the media and social media brainwash you to hate another man. Because men are cool, man. You know what I'm saying? 
Any women are cool too, you know. This ain't no hate video, anything, hate speech, anything. It's at y'all love. I just say that about any feminist, even the black and white feminists, you have no right to attack us, you know what I'm saying? And if you feel a certain way, be courteous. That's all I gotta say. Thanks y'all for watching and listening.